Now, if we look back at our uh, steps, step number one is to move any constant terms to the other side. Well, that's already been done for us. The constant is on the other side. Step two is to complete the square um, and add the constant term to both sides. So if we're going to complete the square right here. Our b is positive 2. We divide that by 2 and square it, so we end up with 1. So we add 1, but according to our laws of math, if we're dealing with an equation, we've got to keep it balanced. If we add it to one side, we've got to add it to the other side. So technically, um, we haven't actually changed this equation. Okay, We're just rewriting it in some different terms because if we subtract one from each side, we've still got our original. Okay, um, So we're keeping it balanced. Now we need to factor the left side. The purpose of completing the square was to create a perfect square trinomial. So it will always factor into x plus uh, or minus b over 2. So in this case it was 1. Uh, and 8 plus 1 is 9. Now we can take the square root of both sides to get rid of that squared. So we have x plus 1 is equal to, this is what you cannot forget. When you take the square root, you cannot forget the plus and the minus because we're supposed to get two solutions here. Okay, Quadratic equations typically have two solutions. So now we have two equations that we need to solve. x plus 1 is equal to positive 3. x plus 1 is equal to negative 3 solve those individually, kind of like we did with the absolute value equations that we had. So one of our solutions is x is equal to 2. The other solution is x is equal to negative 4. Now, the interesting thing is, if you get two whole numbers as your answers, that means that your equation could have been factored. Okay. Uh, technically, at the very beginning, we could have moved that 8 to the left side, and we could have factored that expression um, and gotten the solutions of 2 and negative 4 uh, a little bit easier than we did right here. But um, I'm just trying to, to show you the whole process. Okay? So we get another one. a squared minus 12a minus 22 is equal to 6. Here's a case where we do need to begin by moving a constant to the other side. That 22 has got to go. So we have a squared minus 12a. I'm going to leave myself a space there because I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and complete the square in a minute. And the right side 6 plus 22 is 28. Okay, so if we complete the square, and you may want to do this over to the side, uh, divide your b by 2, so in this case that's negative 6, and square it, that's 36, so we are going to add 36 to both sides of our equation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the left side we need to factor. It's going to factor into a minus 6 squared. The right side, we're going to simplify. 28 plus 36 is 64. Then we're going to take the square root. So a minus 6 is equal to plus or minus 8. Split it into our two equations. A minus 6 is equal to positive 8. A minus 6 is equal to negative 8. So we get 14 as one of our solutions. And we get negative 2 as one of our solutions. And we add 6 to both of those. Okay, again, that means that this one would have been factorable. We're just building up to the more difficult examples. Okay, so we get two more.
Now tell me, uh, is n squared minus 2n minus 24, is that factorable? Can we factor that? Maybe. What are the most common factors of 24? What's the first thing that pops in your head? Anybody? 6 and 4. Okay. Well, one of them's got to be negative. Can we add those to get negative 2 if one of them is negative? Mm -hmm. Negative 6 and negative 4. Okay. Um, so since this one's already set up, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to do this one by factoring. Okay. Because obviously completing the square is a more involved process. If I can factor it, why not go ahead and factor it? Okay. Um, so we get n minus 6 is equal to 0, n plus 4 is equal to 0. So 6 and negative 4 are our solutions. Similarly, with number 24, you should always ask yourself first, can this be factored? Because factoring is easier than completing the square. Um, but sometimes I'm not going to tell you which method to use. I'm just going to say solve this, and you've got to figure out which method you need to use. K squared minus 4K minus 5 does factor. K minus 5 times K plus 1 gives us that answer. So that means 5 and negative 1 are our two solutions. And don't forget, you can always check them. Just plug them back in. Let's get back to completing the square, though. Okay. Let's look at something like n squared minus 53 is equal to 8, negative 8n. Okay, I want you to do the first step where you need to set it up. Okay, But right before you complete the square, move the terms um, so that we can then proceed. We need to move the linear term, Okay, that 8n, that's got to be on the same side as the quadratic term. And the constant term needs to be on the opposite side. So we've got n squared plus 8n is equal to 53. Um, now it's, of course, you should always check to see if it will factor. Uh, 53 does not have, 53 may be a prime number actually, um, but I do not think that any of its factors add to give us 8. Um, so this one's not factorable, so let's go ahead and jump into completing the square. All right, so divide your b by 2, that gives us 4, square it, that's 16. So we add 16 to both sides of our equation. So that factors into n plus 4 squared, and 53 plus 16 is 69. Take the square root of both sides n plus 4 is equal to the square root of 69. 69 is not a perfect square, so we just leave it like that, okay? We do not do anything else. Oh, I forgot my plus and minus. Always put the plus and minus in front of it. And our last step here is to subtract 4. Now, we cannot change what is inside of that square root. So when we subtract the 4 from both sides, the way we need to write it is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 69. Okay, the negative 4 does not change the 69. Um, it does absolutely nothing there. You just move it over and then you have your plus or minus your square root. Okay. Um, you can still check these. You just need to be careful with parentheses. So in your calculator, let's look at that. Um, you check them one at a time. So negative 4 plus the square root of 69. You've got to close your parentheses right there to close it with the square root. You need to close it again around the entire expression. That's squared minus 53. It gives us a crazy decimal number, but look what it's supposed to be equal to. It's supposed to be equal to negative 8 times 
Well, we just plug in. 4 plus the square root of 69. And as long as those give us the same decimal expression, we're good. All right. So that's how you would check this. You could also check the negative, but if the positive worked, the negative is going to work. Okay. All right, let's look at 26. P squared minus 3P minus 75 is equal to 9 plus 5P. So again, we've got a little bit of moving to do. Our linear terms need to be on the same side, so subtract the 5P. The constant needs to be on the opposite side, so add the 75. So we have p squared minus 8p, leave yourself some space, is equal to 84. 9 plus 75 is 84. Okay. Well, we have the same linear coefficient as we did in the previous problem, except this time it's negative. So we're still going to add 16 to both sides. Okay, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Square it. You get 16 added to both sides. This time, though, it's going to factor into P minus 4 because that was a negative right there. 84 plus 16 is 100. Yeah, 100. Take the square root. P minus 4 is equal to, well, 100 is a perfect square, so plus or minus 10. So we can actually solve this one all the way out. Set P minus 4 equal to positive 10 and negative 10, so one solution is 14. The other solution is negative 6. So again, that means that our original equation could have been factored. It could have been factored. All right, so on your worksheet,